sympathies and empathies and from the team the National Assembly of course issues to do with health are issues that are beyond our control Mr. Speaker sir that said we also would want to be cognizant of the fact that we are dealing with a constitutional moment we are dealing with an item whose timelines are prescribed within our constitution. Mr. Speaker, sir, contrary to what learned senior counsel, Mr. Paul Mwite, would want to persuade this house to believe, the proceedings before this house have not been the subject or have not been uh, transacted pursuant to Article 145.6. Mr. Speaker, sir, on the 9th of October this year, this House did sit, did pass a resolution pursuant to the provisions of Article 145.3. Mr. Speaker, sir, pursuant to that resolution, there was a Gazette notice which very clearly indicates that this house was not going to determine that uh, the matter at hand uh, from a committee perspective but that the whole house would then be determining the matter it then follows mr speaker sir that the provisions of article 145 6 would not be applicable mr speaker sir in the same gazette notice you did gazette the seven the 16th and 17th of October to be the days assigned for the hearing and determination of the motion that is before you. That said, Mr. Speaker, sir, we appreciate the place of fair hearing and an opportunity to be accorded the chance and the facilities to be able to defend one's self in a motion such as this. Mr. Speaker, I would want to add that the opportunity to be heard does not have to be oral. The rules of this House permit that parties appearing could elect to be represented, they could elect to come in person, they could file documents. Mr. Speaker, sir, the, uh, His Excellency, the Deputy President, has participated robustly in the proceedings both before the National Assembly, where they filed a very, very detailed uh, replying affidavit and a response. Mr. Speaker, sir, if my memory serves me right, let me just make a quick reference. Before the National Assembly, His Excellency the President did file a response dated the 8th of October 2024. When the proceedings before this House began, his Excellency, the President, uh, the Deputy President, again filed a very robust response dated the 12th of, of October 2024. Mr. Speaker, sir, up to this point in time, His Excellency, the Deputy President, together with his team, have had a beautiful opportunity to present their case. They have had an opportunity to cross-examine in great detail all the, uh, the witnesses that we presented before this House. If anything, Mr. Speaker, sir, if any prejudice were to be occasioned in the course of this, uh, I mean, here in this matter, that prejudice would be on us because our expectation would be that His, ex His Excellency, the President, would be able to attend and avail an opportunity for the National Assembly to cross-examine him. Mr. Speaker, sir, taking into account the circumstances that we find ourselves in, having also very keenly heard uh, learned senior counsel speak, matters held are not matters to be taken lightly. On the same tone, Mr. Speaker, sir, matters held cannot be given timelines. There cannot be certainty that if an adjournment were to be given even for one week, then there is clarity and certainty that we'll be able to proceed on that assigned day. Mr. Speaker, sir, 
we would urge that we borrow practice that has accorded to other similar organs created by the Constitution. I have the courts of law in mind. Mr. Speaker, sir, because I'd earlier on submitted that Article 50 provides for, an I mean, uh, uh, provides for the right to fair hearing, and that that fair hearing does not necessarily have to be oral, we have had practice in our Supreme Court. We are dealing with some of the most important decisions of our lifetimes, including decisions arising from presidential elections, have, in all the uh, elections that we have had, had parties file submissions and their documents, and that their advocates have had an opportunity to appear before the courts to highlight those uh, uh, documents and pleadings that have been filed. In this occasion, because His Excellency, the Deputy President, has had an opportunity to present all the material that he ought to or he wanted to present, and also had the opportunity to cross-examine all the witnesses that he wanted to cross-examine, all that is left on their side is highlighting. On our part, Mr. Speaker, sir, the part of the National Assembly, so that then we are able to give progress to this matter, we are willing to take the painful decision to forego the cross-examination of His Excellency the Deputy President and only proceed with highlighting submissions in relation to the documents that we have filed before this House. It is our humble view that no prejudice would have been occasioned to His Excellency the Deputy President. Mr. Speaker, sir, we urge that that uh, if I had my learned senior colleague, Mr. Paul Mwita, senior counsel, well, he seemed to have been imploring this House to consider adjourning. Mr. Speaker, sir, let me end by drawing the attention of this court to Rule 12 of the proceedings, uh, the rules governing the proceedings currently underway. Mr. Speaker, sir, Rule 12 of those rules dictates that once the hearing has commenced, it shall proceed up to the end. It does not provide for an option for the House to adjourn. If that is the dictate, Mr. Speaker, sir, of the, rule, uh, the rules governing the proceedings before this House, we urge that being a country, being an organ of a constitution that is, uh, uh, that, that, that is controlled by the rule of law and the constitution, you, di we, you direct that we proceed with the hearing as had been planned. I am most obliged. Mr. Speaker, sir, just before uh, I leave the ground, maybe I would uh, want to invite uh, my leader, Mr. Uh, uh, Honorable James Orengo, Senior Counsel, to also just add one word before you give your directions. I am most obliged.